Shepard of a soul, of a soul, Savior of a soul, Lover of a soul. We are on the Lord's Almighty, everlasting Father, the only true and worthy God. Lord, beside you there is no other God. You are that creator that was ever created. Father, we thank you, we worship you, my Lord, my Father. God that loved his so children so much that you sent your only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, who came and died and took away our sins. Father, Lord, here we are in your presence. As your mercy has brought us together, my Lord, my Father, that it today being the last Thursday of the month of December 2018. Lord Almighty, we appreciate you. We never take it for granted. You are the Lord that started the journey of this year with us. And here we are again, Father, Lord, King of all glory, to hear from you, Lord Jesus, as we, your children, have come, my Lord, my Father. That word, oh Lord Jesus, Father, Lord, that will keep us on the right path. That word, oh Lord Jesus, now continually, my Lord, my Father, lead us for us to do your way at all times. That word, oh Lord Jesus, King of all glory, that will make us to feel the most whenever we go wrong and ask for your mercy. My Lord, that word, oh Lord Jesus, King of all glory, that will keep us strong for us not to fall by the wayside and to be able to see you on the last day in glory. My Lord, let that word be dropped in the heart of your children tonight in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Jesus. Father Lord, here we are, my Lord, my Father, your children will have come to see no one but you, Lord Jesus. Father Lord, I'm only opportune, my Lord, my Father, to stand before my brethren, Lord Jesus. It's only an opportunity, my Lord, my Father, it's not a right. Father Lord, as I've come before you, oh Lord Jesus, Father Lord, I ask, my Lord, my Father, that you speak to me and speak through me, my Lord, my Father. Father Lord, may I not speak my own word, oh Lord Jesus. Father, put your word in my mouth, Lord Jesus, King of all glory. Let every part of flesh be crucified. Let your Holy Spirit take absolute control. That at the end of this Bible service, Lord Jesus, my Lord and my Father, each and every soul connected, my Lord and my Father, must have every cause to glorify your holy mighty name. Lord Almighty, take authority, my Lord and my Father, Father, over every principalities, over powers of darkness, over territorial demons, wherever they may gather, Lord Jesus, in order to bring confusion, my Lord and my Father, Lord Jesus, or the destructors, Lord Jesus, Father, Lord, we come against them, my Lord and my Father, we rebuke them by authority, my Lord and my Father, we cast them away, oh Lord Jesus. We ask that the Holy Spirit come and take us under control and do what He alone can do. And at the end, only your name and name alone shall be glorified and magnified. Thank you, Abba Father, for in Jesus Christ's holy name we have all prayed with thanksgiving. Amen. Praise Master Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Child of God, uh, tonight. Tonight, we all know that we are all here for Bible study. We are uh, we together look into the mirror of the Word of God. And at the end, we all have our contributions, our questions uh, to ask because the Bible said, iron sharpens iron. So tonight, by the mercy and the grace of God that has brought me and you to his awesome presence, uh, we have a word uh, that by the grace of God Almighty, as we go through it, Holy Spirit of God will give us the right understanding of the word of God. 
So having said that tonight, uh, please, before I start, uh, our brethren that normally join in the Bible reading because we are doing it together. So please, let's be on hand. Uh, Sister Ego Madibibe, God bless you, my Jesus Christ, mighty name. Can you hear me? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Um, Sister Abiola Favor, uh, oh, Sister man. Kofia Benjamin, and uh, uh, Sister Omobalaji, all other in there. Uh, please, let's um, uh, for us um, join in the few Bible reading uh, we're going to do. So tonight, like I said, we're going to look at a topic, but by the grace of God, is captioned, retracing our step back to the old path retracing our step back to the old path beloved even as the year is coming to an end god almighty has something for me and you that those things that will hinder us that will drawing us back even as we go this race for us to leave them behind and be able to find out that old path that god has made for his children that part that when we follow, by his grace, we'll see him in glory on the last day. So that is why the topic is coming now, retracing our step back to the old path. Um, our uh, Bible reading, uh, which is our foundational text this tonight, uh, shall be taken from the book of Jeremiah. Jeremiah chapter 6. Uh, please, Jeremiah 6, and I'll read from verse 13 to 16 because of time. Jeremiah 6. 13 to 16 and i read he said for from the least of them even unto the greatest of them everyone is given to covetousness and from the prophets even unto the priest everyone dealeth falsely for things they have healed also the heart of the daughter of my people lightly saying peace peace when there is no peace 15 we are there ashamed when they have committed abomination nay they were not at all ashamed neither could they blush therefore they shall fall among them that fall at the time that I visit them they shall be cast down, said the Lord. 16, our last verse. Say, Thus said the Lord, Stand ye in the ways, and see, and ask for the old paths. Where is the good way? And walk therein, and ye shall find rest for your souls. But they said, We will not walk therein. Praise Master Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. So, beloved, if we, if where we just read now, we read with understanding of the Holy Spirit, uh, which is our teacher, we will discover that the Lord God Almighty, where we just read, is not just, you know, a, a requesting through Prophet Jeremiah. That the people of Israel that have wandered away, that have strayed away because of their atrocious behavior, because of their iniquity, he was not asking them just to come back to him. Let's get it clear. Rather, the Lord is requiring them to return to the old paths. The Lord was not, get me right. Well, well, I will get somewhere. The Lord is not requiring them. The Lord is requesting them to return back to the old paths. Why do I say that? Beloved, there is always a difference between request and require. There is a clear difference between what? Request and require. Because in request, you have the power to turn, turn down a request. If I request you to do something for me, if it is not convenient for you, you can say, no, I can't be able to do that. You will turn down that request. But the requirement, beloved, requirement is what you 
or I must fulfill in order to get what we want. So God is requesting them. God is in this context where we just read now. He's requesting the people of Israel to turn back to the old path so that his anger will not descend upon them. So that his anger will not destroy them because of their atrocities. It's a requirement. If they want the anger of God not to fall upon them, they must do what? They must go back to the old path. The old path of holiness and righteousness. The old path of acknowledging the commandment of God as he gave to Moses. So this is the request of God to the children of Israel in order that what? That his anger will not fall upon them. Beloved, the same way the word of God is what? It's requesting me and it's requiring me and you, not requesting. Even as the year is coming to an end. The same way the word of God is requiring us. It's a requirement for every sinner to do what? To repent. Anyone that is living ungodly to repent of their sins or be ready for the impending danger. The same way the word of God is requiring, even as we have gathered tonight by his mercy, it's requiring me, it's requiring you that we should turn away from anything that will draw his anger upon us. The Bible said in the book of Romans chapter 1, verse 18, please, the, the people reading, and somebody can go to Ezekiel, Ezekiel 25, verse 17, 1, first one, Romans 1, 18, Ezekiel 25, 17, and another person can stand at Matthew 11, 29 to 30. But first of all, let us take Romans 1, 18. Amen. I read in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. For the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men who hold the truth in unrighteousness. Amen. 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 For the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness, against all unrighteousness of men who hold the truth in, what? in unrighteousness. So God is here requiring the children of Israel because you have walked the wrong way, because you have turned the truth to lie. For my anger, for my wrath not to fall upon you, you must quickly retrace your step to the old path. Otherwise, the impending danger is almost around the corner. Ezekiel 25, 17. Ezekiel chapter 25, verse 17. I read in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. And I will execute great vengeance upon them with furious rebukes, and they shall know that I am the Lord when I shall lay my vengeance upon them. Amen. Amen. Beloved, the same God that sounded this morning is the same God that me and you have come to hear from tonight. The same way it sounded the note of warning that even as the year is coming to an end, it is a time. It is a time for people that really understand. Like the children of Issachar, the Bible said they understand the time. People that really understand the time that we are in now, it's a time for us to checkmate. Just like as companies, you know, they, they, uh, they do balance, uh, 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 they, they, they take their stocks at the end of the year. It is a time for the children of God to make ourselves to overhaul and to see how far we have gone and to see where we have got it wrong and begin to retrace our step to the old path. Beloved, this warning that God is giving to the children of Israel is not peculiar to them alone, it is for me and you today. The children of God today are also facing the same danger. That is why Jesus Christ is therefore calling his children to follow his ways, to follow his doctrine, and to follow his commandments. Otherwise, the same thing that is pronounced on the children of Israel, when they deviated, the same thing can still apply. Today, Jesus Christ is calling his children to follow his ways, to follow his doctrines, and to follow his commandments. So as to do what? To, to run away from what? From the wrath of God. 
Matthew 11, 29 to 30. I read in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me, for I am meek and lowly in heart, and ye shall find rest unto your souls. 30. For my yoke is easy and my body light. Amen. Amen. See, here, Jesus Christ, a merciful God, is calling me and you. He said, We should do ourselves good. We should do good to our soul by doing what? By taking up his yoke. You see, he goes, learn from me. Any knowledge void of what of the word of God is knowledge that we have leads to doom. He said, learn from me. For I am what I am meek and lowly in heart, and ye shall find rest unto your soul. In other ways, failure to learn from him, danger is imminent. Say, for my yoke is easy and my burden is light. In other ways, whichever way that we have gone wrong, in as much as God still gives us the breath of life, the, 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 the grace to see breath, we still have the grace to be able to retrace our step back to the old path. Praise Master Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. But it is regrettable. Me and you can attest to that. It is quite regrettable today that Christians today they prefer the new path to the old path. The Christians of today do what? They prefer the new path to the old path. Remember, the old path is called what? The good way. They prefer the new path to that good way as required by God. Because the new path today, why do, why do humanity like the new path? Because the new path is what? They are delusional. In other words, they dilute the word of God. They turn the truth of the word of God to lie. They paint people in order to perish them. So the new paths are what? They are delusional and destructive. They represent the new generation way of worshipping God. That is the new, the new path. It represents the new generation of worshipping God. Where godliness and worldliness are made to interwoven, but this is not supposed to be so. That is what that is a new path that the new generation is not clamoring for, that the world is clamoring for, and refuse to go to the to the old path as God has commanded his children. They prefer the new path because of what because it is easy to be what to interwoven godliness with worldliness. Jesus Christ set a similar requirement. For us all, he set a similar requirement for us all when he asks us to do what? To strive to enter the right path. The right path is the old path. He commanded me and you, if we must not run this race in vain, if we must see him in glory on the last day, that we must do everything humanly possible, use the last breath that we have, the last strength in us to be able to strive to be able to enter into what? Into that path. Into that right path. That path is narrow. That path that nothing unholy can be able to enter into it. That is what? That is the old path. Where God have outlined his commandments. It is the old path. But the humanity today prefer the new path. Where what? Where it is not, it is, it is quite impossible to be able to distinguish godliness from holiness. Let's go to book of Luke. Luke chapter 13, verse 24. Please, let's take note, Luke 13, 24, and somebody, John 14, 6, and another person can read Acts of the Apostles chapter 4, verse 12. But first, let's read Luke 13, verse 4. Amen. Amen. I read Luke 13, 4. 13, 4. Amen. Amen. For those 18 upon whom the tower in Siloam fell and slew them, think. 1324, you're ready, ma'am. 1324. So, yes. Praise the Lord. Sorry, sir. Strive to enter in at the, at the straight gate. For many, I say unto you, will seek to enter in and shall not be able. Amen. 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 So Jesus Christ is sounding the warning to me and you, just like he sounded to the people of Israel. For them to do what? To go back to the old path. 
Today, Jesus Christ is telling us that we should not join the new generation that prefer the new path. That we must do everything humanly possible, no matter how painful it might be. We must always strive to enter in at the straight gates, which is the old path, and which is the good way. For many, I say unto you, we seek to enter in and shall not be able, which means it is very, very contestable. That we must at all times strive. Strive means we must do everything humanly possible. Anything that it takes for us to make it, we must always try and not to succumb to the new path. This new uh, this uh, way that Jesus Christ is asking me and you, in that path, there is only one way to the Father. There is no two way. But many people will be deceiving. Gullible, they are gullible members. If I pray to you, you are okay. It doesn't matter the life you are living. I'm here praying for you. But in this way that Jesus Christ is commanding us, it is only one, only one way. Only one way to see him. There is no other two way. That is the path of eternal life. It is what? A path of eternal life. Why the new path? Beloved, is a path of destruction. John chapter 14, verse 6. I read in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Jesus said unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. Amen. 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 So in that old path that we are being encouraged to go back, it is only one way through which man can enter into the kingdom of God. And Jesus Christ by himself had the it here. He said, I am the way. That old path, that good way. I am the way. I am the truth. I am the life. Anything short of that, it was is a pure life on the pit of hell. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. Only one way. The old path, the good path, the narrow path that the Bible enjoined me and you to continually strive on. He said, I am the way. That only way to be able to meet the Father. So we must at all time strive to do what? To retrieve our step toward, uh, to the commandment, to the compass of life that Christ has blessed me and you. You know, that on, that on the last day, we'll be able to see him in glory. Praise Master Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Acts of the Apostle chapter 4 verse 12. Acts chapter 4 verse 12, I read in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Neither is there salvation in any other, for there is none other name, other heaven, given among men, whereby we must be saved. Amen. Amen. God bless you, Lord. Most High God. You see, when you read such verse, you begin to pray, pray vigorously for as many, for all the countless souls that are still arguing blindly. That are still thinking that there is still a short way, there is another way to get to heaven. When the Bible have described, I've said categorically here, he said, Neither is there salvation in any other, for there is none other name other than the heaven given among men, whereby we must be saved. It's only what through the name of Jesus Christ, the old part. But the new part will tell you, say, it doesn't matter. In as much as you, are, as you belong to uh, a social so denomination, you are okay. In as much as a social so person is your general overseer, you are covered. It does not matter the kind of life you are living. It does not matter the kind of a thing you are doing, even though you keep on romancing sin. It does not matter. I'll be saying here, until we trace back to the old path, that old path is what? By following the compass of life, the word of God. His doctrines, his commandments, his teaching in true holiness and righteousness. That is the only way we can be able to meet him on the last day in glory. But why are we saying this? Because the new path is a man's miserable substitution. That is where people hide under disguise. It's a man's miserable substitution for the grand old path of God and his undiluted world. That is why the Bible calls it the broad way. Or the new path, the Bible calls it the Broadway. Or the new path, and those that choose those new paths, those Broadway, 
they will end up where they never imagined that it at all exists. The new path that humanity have chosen is a part of is a part of destruction. The new path is the broad way. As the Bible said in the book of Matthew, chapter 7, verse 13. Matthew 7, 13, and somebody can stand at Luke chapter 16, verse 19 to 24. But first, Matthew 7, 13. Amen. I read in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Enter ye, enter ye in at the straight gate. For wide is the gate, and broad is the way that leadeth to destruction. And many dear be which go in their heart. Amen. 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 You see, the new path is a broad way that anything goes. It's a, a broad way of destruction that everything goes. And they are still believing that with that kind of excess load, all those ungodly load that they see enter into the kingdom of God. He said, enter here at the straight gate, which is the Lord's old path. For wide is the gate, the new path, and the broad is the way that leadeth to destruction. And many years be which go in therein. Just like, you know, uh, uh, the, uh, uh, the man of God told us, you know, the, the, the vision that God, you know, showed uh, the young boy that joined us in, uh, in Dublin branch here, that people, that the, the, the souls that were entering here, he said he can only describe it as a running water. In other ways, the speed is uncountable. The speed is uncountable. The way souls are rushing into hell every day. And that is, that is to tell us that this Bible is complete. I will say that many there, people should go into it. In other ways, the word of God can never lie. Until we're able to do what? To return ourselves to the old path. Let the old path guide us. Where we can be able to, to tremble before God. Where whatever thing we do, we wear it with the word of God. Praise Master Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. As many, as many, I said, no, we don't care. This is what? An age of technology. This is a new generation. Uh, we are living in a time of grace. God, Jesus Christ, has come to die. It does not matter the kind of life we live. It is era of mercy. I tell you the truth. They will end up in a place that they never Im imagined, but it actually exists. Just like uh, uh, the rich man. In the book of Luke, Luke 16, 19 to 24. I read in Jesus' name, Luke 19. Amen. Amen. There was a certain rich man, which was clothed in purple and fine linen, and feared so suciously so every day. 20. And there was a certain beggar named Nazareth, which was laid at his gate, full of souls. 21. And desiring to be fed with these crumbs, which fell from the rich man's table, Moreover, the dogs came and licked his sores. 22. And it came to pass that the beggar died and was carried by the angels into Abraham's bosom. The rich man also died and was buried. 23. And in hell he lift up his eyes, being in torment, and, and set Abraham afar off, and Lazarus in his bosom. 24. And he cried and said, Father Abraham, have mercy on me, and send Lazarus, that he may that he may dip the tip of his finger in water and cool my tongue, for I am tormented in this flame. Amen. Amen. God bless you, Lord, most high God. But that fear, that begging for mercy, did it at all get to the ear of God? The answer is no. Now from where the Lord of God just read, the Bible have again let us know that hell is a place of torment. When this rich man was alive, the Bible said he was feeling sumptuously. In other words, he had more than excess. But he never wanted to go to the old part, old part of what of living his life in holiness and righteousness. He was doing everything thinking that all is about money, that money answered everything. The Bible says, until he died in ignorance, and his soul find himself in a place that he never imagined that he exists. He now begins to cry. He now begins to make clear. But till today, he still, that cry is still going on. That cry is still going on. He has never received any, words, any mercy. So anyone, I say it doesn't matter. The new part is the, is the word of life. After all, we're a new generation. Look at 
the predicament of the rich man. You better learn from that. I pray. God Almighty will open our eyes in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Now, beloved, having known the need for us to always retrace our step back to the old path, the question now is this. Why is it a requirement? Why is it a prerequisite for anyone that wants to make it to the kingdom of God on the last day that we must retrace our step back to the old path? Why? Somebody may ask, why is it necessary? One, one of the reasons is this, beloved. In the old part, in the old part, that, that, is, where we, that is where we have unwavering belief in God. Old part is when we begin to live our life in the word of God. In the old part, that is where we can what, see an unwavering belief in the God that we serve. Today, the people of the new part, their belief is halfway. They believe in God when things are okay. When there is a little challenge, they are step, they are, they are, their feet will quickly take them to begin to look for, to, uh, to, 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 uh, for, for a solution. They begin to look for, for, our, for an alternative. But in the old path, there is what? An unwavering belief in God. There is an unwavering belief in God. The old path is the part that people like Abraham, people like David, people like Moses, etc. That is the old part that they followed. The old part that they believed. They believed God and fully accepted the word of God as a lamp unto their feet. And their destiny was never aborted by Satan. Whatever that God said concerning them came to pass because they were living on the old part. And in that, they have what an unwavering belief in God. Hebrews chapter 11, verse 17. I can simply quickly go to the book of Daniel. Daniel chapter 3, verse 16 to 18. And another person can uh, stand at Hebrews 11, verse 6. I call it again the first one. Hebrews 11, verse 17. Daniel 3, 16 to 18. And Hebrews 11, 6. Praise Master Jesus Christ. Oh, yeah. yeah. Hebrew eleven seventeen, please. I read in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Through faith also, Sarah herself received strength to conceive seed and was delivered of a child when she was past age because she judged him faithful who had promised. Hebrew eleven seventeen, ma. Are you, are you reading? Oh, God. 17, by faith, Abraham, when he was tried, offered up, of, offered up Isaac, and he that had received the promises offered up his only begotten son. Amen. I'm sorry. Amen. Amen. We are talking about tracing our life back to the old path, where we can believe and trust the God that we said is our Savior, is our Creator. That in all situations and circumstances, God remained God. The Bible said, by faith. That's why I say in the old part, that is where the unwavering belief in God is. He said, by faith, Abraham, when he was tried, offered up Isaac. And because of that action, that was it, and he had received the promises, offered up his only begotten son. In the old part, that's where you see people that have faith, that come and concern, God remained God. I cannot, because of this situation, deny my God. That is where you have unwavering belief. Praise Master Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. And let's go to the book of Daniel to see what uh, 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 the young Hebrew boys, they displayed in the old part. That is where the unwavering belief and faith is. Daniel chapter 3, verse 16 to 18. Daniel chapter 3, verse 16 to 18, I read in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Verse 16, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego answered and said to the king, O Nebuchadnezzar, 
We are not careful to answer thee in this matter. Verse 17. If it be so, our God, whom we serve, is able to deliver us from the burning fairy furnace, and he will deliver us out of thy hands, O king. Verse 18. But if not, be it known unto thee, O king, that we will not serve thy God, nor worship the golden image, which thou art set up. Amen. Amen. God bless you, the Lord Most High God. In the new path, in the new generation believers, it is hard to find this kind of faith. Look at them. Look at that. The fire, uh, 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 it, uh, it, it has gone up to, uh, uh, to a level. The like Bible said that even the people that were sent to come and throw in them, them in, before they come there, they melted. But in the midst of that, they were able to stand and look at the king face to face. They were able to tell the king. He said, God whom we serve is able to deliver us from the burning fairy fair furnace. And he will deliver us. But if not, if he please God, that through this way, that we're going to meet him in heaven. Let it be so. King will not serve you. But in the new path, we are believers, Christians do the way we like. You decide to find this kind of faith. That is why the word of God is telling us in this study that even as the year is coming to an end, since we still have the breath of life, it is an opportunity for us to do what to retrace our step back to the old path. Praise Master Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Why? Because in the old path, that is where we can stand our faith intact, our belief in God. Unshakable. Hebrew 11, verse 6. I read in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. But without faith, it is impossible to please him. Hmm. For he that cometh to God must believe that he is, and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. Amen. 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 God, without faith, it's impossible. And that is why People who uh, profess themselves to be Christians, what we hear, thank God, you know, for uh, uh, social media and so on, what we see in the, uh, YouTube or, or in the media, uh, medias is mind boggling. What so professed Christians do? Why? Because of what? Lack of faith. The new part generation. Bible said we should retrieve our step back to the old part where we believe God, no matter whether good or bad. Just like Shadrach, Mishan, and Abednego. So without faith, it's impossible. It's without faith, we can't go far. Without faith, there are many challenges. Without faith, there are many thorns on the way. Until we retrieve our step back to the old path, where we can stand and know that God is God. God never fail. Praise Master Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Secondly, brethren, in the old path is the fear of God rooted in the life of his children. In the old part, that is where you see the fear of God in the life of children of God. Today, many prophets, Christians, they say they are Christians, so many go into rituals. Many kill human beings like animals. Even animals will have more value than human beings today. And not like Christians. These are new generation, new parts. Until we go back to that old part, where the word of God, where the fear of God is rooted in the life of his children. We are the fear of God. We make us, even though we had the opportunity to do a certain things, but because it's against the word of God, because it's against the commandment and the doctrine of God, said we will not do this. Even though nobody sees us, but because it's against the word of God, we will not do it. That is what the life of the old part. The life of the old part. In the book of Genesis, we all know the story of, uh, of uh, 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 that young man called Joseph. A small boy. But he happened to find himself in what? In Egypt, where his brother sold him as a slave. He had no father, he had no mother, no uncle, no aunt, no, no at all. And all of a sudden, an opportunity just reared up. That Potiphar now loved him, made him the head of his house. And that's an opportunity. Satan wanted to use it to drag his soul to hell. But he stood his ground. There was a, a mouth watering offer that came to him. That if it is today, the new generation, the new path will grab it and even come to the church to celebrate, to give thanksgiving. 
But he stood and said, no, I will not do this. Let's go to the book of Genesis. Genesis chapter uh, 39. Genesis 39. We read from 7 to 9. And somebody can stand in the book of 1 Samuel. 1 Samuel 26. 7 to 9. 1 Samuel 26. 7 to 9. And another person, please. Psalm 128. Verse 1 to 4. But first of all, Genesis 39. 7 to 9. God bless you, man. I read in Jesus' name. Genesis 39. Amen. Amen. Seven to nine. And it came to pass after these things that his master's wife cast her eyes upon Joseph. Mm. And she said, Lie with me. Eight. For he refused and said unto his master's wife, Behold, my master watered not what is with me in this in the house, and he had committed all that he had to my hand. Nine. There is none greater in this house than I, neither had he kept back anything from me but thee, because thou art because thou art his wife, how then can I do this great wickedness and sin against God? Amen. 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 Was, was I how can I do this wicked? See, things that other people will call an opportunity and enjoyment, he sees it as what? As wickedness unto his God. Knowing fully well that his refusal to the advancement of the wife of Potiphar can land him into danger, yet he stood the old path where the fear of God is being rooted in his life, in the life of his children. And that is what the word of God is telling me and you today, that even as we are about to enter into the year 2019, let his fear be rooted into our life so that we will not do what? We will not serve Satan unknown to us. Praise Master Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Yeah. We can see the same thing replay in the life of David. Let's be truthful here. Let's be realistic. We normally pray for our enemies to die, for God, you know, to kill them, to somersault them, and, and this like It's not about prayer. Okay, we are praying that prayer. Now, if physically we are praying, we don't know how when it will happen, but we now have the opportunity to pin that our enemy once and for all, and it's gone and gone forever. Many of us will grab the opportunity. But Saul was looking for the life of David. David who was doing him good. To kill him by all means. But an opportunity came. But David got to see Saul. Helpless. Where they were sleeping and so on. And his armor bearer told him. God have done what? Given the life of your enemy in your hand today. Go ahead. Just don't go. Just allow me. Let me do it. I won't do it twice. But look at what he said. Why? Because of the fear of God in him. Let's go to that book of uh, 1 Samuel 26, 7 to 9. Amen. 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 So David and Abisha came to the people by night. And behold, Saul lay sleeping within the trench, and his face stuck in the ground, and his bolster. But Abner and the people lay round about him, ate. Then said Abisha to David, God had delivered thy enemy into thy hand this day. Now, therefore, let me smit him. I pray thee with his spear even to the earth at once, and I will not smit him the second time. Nine. And David said to Abishai, Destroy him not, for who can stretch forth his hand against the Lord's anointed and be guiltless? Amen. Amen. God bless you. Most high God, more grace. An opportunity. See, that fear of God in him. He said, Abisha, don't. This counseling, I will not take this one. Even though Saul have declared me as number one enemy. But who can lay his hand on the Lord's anointed and be guiltless? The fear of God. Many so prophet Christians. There is no fear of God in us. We say anything we want to say. Mouth is made to talk. And the secret we do what we do. No fear of God. I will see prophets who are the children of God. God is telling us that we should go back to the old path so that my fear can be rooted in you. So whatever we do, let the fear of God be in us. Because there is no fear of God in the Christian, the Christian of today. That is why many people attack Christians and forget about that in church and so on. Why? Because they must have had one nasty experience for one Christian or the other. I will tell you, it's even better I deal with an unbeliever than a Christian. May God deliver us in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Hey. Psalm chapter 128, verse 1 to 4. 
Psalm chapter 128, verse 1 to 4, I read in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Blessed is everyone that feareth the Lord, that walketh in his ways. Verse 2, for thou shalt eat the labor of thy hands. Happy shall thou be, and it shall be well with thee. Amen. Amen. You see? The fear of God is not cowardice. But people think that when you don't want to get yourself into immoral acts or into something ungodly, you are a coward. Or you don't know what other people are doing. Many people today, every opportunity is an opportunity. That's why people can defraud one another. They give it name for one night and things like that. Because there is no fear of God. But anyone that has the fear of God, there are some opportunities that will come and say, no, I know this is from the pit of hell. The blessing of, that coming from God, the Bible says, it, uh, it, 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 it blesses our soul and added, there is no sorrow about it at all. It makes it well. Every blessing that comes from God makes it well and added no sorrow. That's why our sister just said, he said, blessed is every man that feareth the Lord. People may give you name. Say you're a coward, you don't know what other people are doing. He said, for thou shalt eat the labor of thy hands. Happy shall thou be, and it shall be well with thee. We have seen many people who have rushed into, you know, acquisition of wealth, you know, no matter the way it comes. They might enjoy it as we think they are enjoying. But on the last day, on that day, day that day of accountability, just like the rich man. The rich man, if he has the fear of God, in that book of Luke that we read, if he had the fear of God, how can somebody come daily to your table to the extent that the soil in his body before dogs can be licking a soil, it means that he's thinking, he's smelling. He don't have the moral God to say, ah, please, people should go and take him to go and, uh, and treat him. But tell him not to come again, but go and treat him. But he was doing scrambling with the dogs. As he's taking, looking for something to eat, dogs are eating his, uh, uh, their own through his body. But even in that state, he did not force Lazarus to do what is evil. Now, when he died, he finds himself in the bosom of the Lord. And the rich man opened his eyes where he thought never existed, where he thought all his lifetime that it's all about money. And he began to make a player, a player that was never answered to today. Pray. God Almighty, open our eyes in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Ah, Amen. We may take one or two because of time. He told me, pressing back to the old path, we strengthen us to always meditate. It will strengthen us to always to meditate and reflect on the awesomeness of our God, even in the face of persecution. If we were walking in the old path, the Bible did not tell us that challenges will not come, trial will not come. But when they come, we stand on the awesomeness of God. If this God has not failed me from so and so thing, he will not fail in this one. This God that I have had that I have done so and so thing, my own is small. But if we do not trace our back, we belong to the new path, new generation. You will have friends that will tell you, my sister, my brother, help yourself. I didn't tell you not to go and connect to that your church. They will begin to give you verses that come from nowhere, quotations. Help you help those who help themselves. Don't let uh, 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 soap enter. I go. They begin to give a taste. But if we are living our life as a Christian on the old path, no matter what comes our way, we'll be able to meditate always on the awesomeness of God, knowing fully well that our God never failed. Praise Master Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Job remembered. We, we know the account of Job. The Bible started by telling us that Job was a wealthy man. It's not like, you know, it's a, it's a man that is struggling from hand to mouth. The Bible can never lie. He says he's a wealthy man. But when it was the time of what challenges, persecutions, his friends left him, his children died, everything that gives him joy went away. Even his own wife gave him the shortest way to be able to take away his life. So that it can be easy for her either to remarry. Because the Bible said, you know, thou shalt not leave your husband or tell death do your part. So he was looking for a way for death to do part so that she can begin to live her life. Cause fear God and die. But in the, in the midst of that, 
Job was still reflecting. He was still meditating on the awesomeness and the love of God. Let's see the book of Job chapter 13. Job 13, verse 15 to 16. Job 13, 15 to 16. And somebody can open to the book of Psalm 143, verse 5. 143, verse 5. And Romans 8, Romans 8, 37 uh, to 39. Romans 8, 37 to 39. But first of all, Job 13, 15 to 16. Amen. 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 I read in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Though he slay me, yet will I trust in him. But I will maintain my own ways before him. Mm. 16. He also shall be my salvation. For an hypocrite shall not come before him. Mm. Amen. 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 God bless you, Lord Most High God. In Amen. the midst of what Job was passing through, the Bible says, how many of us can be that? Even when his friends are giving him, you know, the shortest way to come out from his predicament. He said, though he slay me, yet will I trust him. How many of us can still trust somebody that we thought that he, we thought that he has left us? Many of us will say, I don't come to church. I don't connect again. I don't think that God still answer prayer. I thought that God has forsaken me. Therefore, that is why I have chosen, you know, to go for option B, to begin to help myself. But in this stage, Job said that though he slay me, yet I trust in him. But I will maintain my own way before him. In other ways, I will maintain my integrity before him. I will not succumb. I will not bring the name of God to the mud. He also shall be my salvation. For an hypocrite shall not come before him. In other ways, many of us are serving God hypocritically. Many of us, our service outwardly, we can say, oh, that man, oh, as he's preaching, oh, as he's praying. But Job is saying, hypocritically, if we're not serving hypocritically, we can be able to stand no matter, the, no matter the circumstances. We can be able to defend him. Even in our secrecy, it's not only when somebody sees us. So, working on the old path will make us that in the face of challenges, in the face of persecution, in the face of the troubles of this world, Satan will not take away for us not to meditate how awesome and to reflect about the goodness of God in our life. Amen. Amen. So please, let's uh, text Psalm 143 verse 5. I read in Jesus in 143 verse 5. Amen. I remember the days of old. I meditate on all thy works. I muse on the work of thy hands. Amen. 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 It's called about meditation. Well, if we are walking in the old paths, not in the new generation, we'll be able to meditate on the love of God always. We'll be able to reflect. We'll not allow it because Satan is very clever in putting before us those that thing, that particular thing that we're still waiting on God to do. And he will make us to forget every good thing that God has done for me and you. That is the scheme of Satan. Praise Master Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Yeah. Please, our time is fast spent. Can we take that uh, Romans 8, please? Romans 8, I read in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Sorry, verse, verse 37. Yes, Next, ma'am. In all these things, we are more than conquerors through him that love us. 38. For I am persuaded that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come. The deny the last verse, nor height, nor depth, nor any other creature shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. 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 Oh, most high God. In Amen. the face of challenge, in the face of trial, can we be able to know and tell ourselves that we are more than conquerors? That this situation, this trial, my God is able to turn you to testimony. Nothing will separate me from the love of God. Nothing will make me to turn back to become his enemy tomorrow. Nothing will make me to drop the, the, the cross. Nothing will make me to deny my God. This is exactly what Apostle Paul is saying. Until we'll be able to walk in the old path. But if we belong to the new path, to the new generation, that is when we begin to mix up things. We begin to yoke up together, which the Bible said is not supposed to be so. Our time is fast spent. I will take this last one. The old part is a part of what? Holiness and righteousness. It's a part whereby we acknowledge, we acknowledge that this God, this awesome God that called me and you, he said, be holy because what? I am what? I am holy. Let's see 
uh, what the Bible says. Uh, uh, somebody please read uh, Psalm, Psalm 119, verse 9 to 11. Psalm 119, verse 9 to 11. And somebody, Leviticus, Leviticus 19, verse 1 to 2. Leviticus 19, 1 to 2. Psalm 119, 9 to 11. And 1 Peter 1, 15 to 16. God bless you, man. Amen. Psalm 119, verse 9 to 11, I read in Jesus' name. Amen. Uh, verse 9. Wherewithal shall a young man cleanse his way by taking it dear to according to the word? Verse 10. With my own heart have I sought thee. Oh, let me not wander from the commandment. Verse 11. The word have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against thee. Amen. Amen. God bless the Most High God. Amen. And the old part is where we can always ask God, Father, I know it is not easy. I know I am really in a challenging period. But Lord Jesus, with my own heart, I've asked, let me not wander away from your commandments. Do not allow the situation of, do not allow the circumstances to make me to wander away from your commandments. Living the life of old parts. But if not so, when that challenge will come, when that trial will come, the possibility, if we're not living the old parts, to follow the new generation, to begin to do what they do, thinking that we're helping ourselves, thinking we're helping God. Many at times, many things that we do, we think we're helping God, but we know. And nobody can help God. I pray. God Almighty will have mercy upon us in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Leviticus 19, 1 to 2. I read in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, 2. Speak unto all the congregation of the children of Israel, and said unto them, Ye shall be holy, for I, the Lord your God, I am holy. Amen. 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 Hey. Beloved, living the old path will make us to realize that no matter what we do, any life void of holiness and righteousness can never see God. If God by himself can command a servant Moses, he's the same God that will have come this evening to, uh, 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 to hear from him. He says, speak unto the congregation of the uh, children of Israel and say unto them, ye shall be holy for I, the Lord, your God, am holy. Only the old path. But in the new generation, they will ask you who can be holy. Forget about that. God understands. God is calling us for us to retrace ourselves to the word, to the word, old parts. Praise Master Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. We take this last one there, the first Peter 1 15 to 16, because of time. I read, I read in Jesus' name. First Amen. Amen. 115. But as he which has called you is holy. So be ye holy in all manners of con conversation. Amen. 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 Say the same thing. It's real coin. That's in the old part. That's when we remember. That's when we know. That's when we don't allow ourselves to be cajoled. That without holiness, we can still see God. But in the old part, we see that. Tell ourselves that whatever we do, God help me to live a life of holiness. Because you have said it critical clear that no matter what we do, any life void of holiness and righteousness can never see you on the last day. And anyone that cannot see God, you must see somebody. And that is Satan. And I pray that will not be our portion in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Beloved, the old part will always remind you and me not to romance, to romance ourselves, not to romance with sin, but to run away from everything sinful. That is what the, what the old part will always remind us. But the new part will tell you that it doesn't matter. The old part will always tell you to run away from everything sinful. First Thessalonians 5.22, he said we should abstain from all appearances of what? Of all evil. We have to do that. That danger, the Lord Almighty warned the people of Israel through Jeremiah, that danger is still looming today. I pray, his infinite mercy, as his words have come to you and me, the grace for us to restrict our step back to the old paths, God Almighty, we give it to us in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Uh, this is how far uh, we can go. I'm sorry, our time is fast spent. Uh, please, uh, brethren, uh, are you out there and you know you have not given your life to Jesus Christ? You are still telling yourself 
But it doesn't matter. We are in the new generation. You belong to the new path. You have heard the word of God today, but it's an opportunity for you to come into his presence, and it's an opportunity for you to do what? To retrace your step. In as much as you still have the breath of life in you, you trace your step to the old path so that you'll be able to live a life that will, be one, that will be pleasing to God. That life that will make you to see him on the last day in glory. So if you are there, I, I advise you that you do the first thing first by what? By acknowledging him, confessing him as your Lord and personal Savior. And he'll be able to give you that grace to be able to walk on that old path in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Um, if you are there, you want to give your life unto Jesus Christ, please, I enjoin you to repeat this short prayer after me. Say, Lord Jesus, having had your word tonight, now I have known that all that glitters are not good. Father, in any way that I've been living a life of I don't care, I've been living a life telling myself that grace covers everything. But today, you have admonished me that I should return to the old path. The old path of holiness and righteousness, the old path of fearing you in whatever I do, the old path of believing you. Lord Jesus, I have humbly surrendered my life unto you. I give my life unto you today. And I ask you to please, in your mercy, come into my life. Be my Lord and personal Savior. Forgive me every sinful life that I've been living. As I receive you today, O oh Lord Jesus, Father, let all things be passed away. By your mercy, make everything new in my life. And let your mercy please cleanse my name from the book of death and write the book of life. As I receive you today into my life, oh Lord Jesus, Father, I believe I receive the power to retrace my step back to that old, uh, that old path that you require of me. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for giving me this opportunity. In Jesus Christ's mighty name. Amen. Amen. Heavenly Father, we thank you, worship you, we adore you. And I thank you, my Lord, my Father, for bringing us together today, being the last Thursday of the month of December 2018 for us to, to look into your word. Father Lord, I pray, my Lord, my Father, Father Lord, as your word has come to us, my Lord, my Father, Father Lord, the grace, my Lord, my Father, anything that we need to do, my Lord, my Father, Father Lord, to be able to retrace ourselves back to that open that you require of us. Father Lord, give us that grace to do so in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. My Amen. Every life that I believe in before, my Lord, my Father, that new path, my Lord, my Father, that the Bible calls a Broadway that leads to destruction. Father Lord, in your mercy. Father Lord, deliver your children today in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Father, Lord, open any mistake, any error, Lord Jesus, have I spoken your word of contest? Father Lord, I plead for your mercy in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Father, thank you and worship you. Give you all glory and honor. For in Jesus Christ's holy name, we have all prayed with thanksgiving. Amen. Amen. Praise Master Jesus Christ. Amen. Hallelujah. Robert, I'm really sorry if I took the time. Please, over to you, uh, Santa.